The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. He went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom, and he read from the prophet Isaiah. The eyes of all were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? Jesus said to them, Doubtless you will quote me this quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did in Capernaum. And he said to them, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel at the time of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up for three years and six months. And there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them, except the widow of Zephyr, in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha. None of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, they were all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up and drove Jesus out of town and led him to, to the brow of the hill on which the town was built so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But Jesus passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm going to start off with last week's Gospel reading which was the words you didn't hear Jesus say in today's reading. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he had anointed me to bring the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim rescue to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all were in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. That's where the day starts with last week's reading. Jesus personally claimed to be the Messiah through his reading by that statement. He was the promise of all the prophets. All who come before him promised him, and here he is, claiming to the people, loud and clear, who he was. And what did the people do? Threw him out of town. They threw him out of town. Actually, they considered, they wanted to do worse. They wanted to throw him off the cliff. Fortunately, this is flat land. I don't have to worry about anything. At least I haven't seen any hills. At first, they were impressed with him and praised him. For he spoke with wisdom and power. But then some said, Is this not Joseph's son? Is this not Joseph's son? The fact is, it is... He is not Joseph's son. That's what they didn't know. He was the boy from down the street. Grew up with him, run with him, learned with him. How could he be the son of God, the Messiah? The people of his town did not know his history. They did not know about his miracle birth, about the angel singing glory to God in the highest for the Messiah has come. He was not 
There, when John said, as he baptized Jesus, Jesus, the Father said, this is my son. This is my son, not Joseph's son. My son. Then the people started to ask for signs and wonders, but he refused. No prophet is acceptable in his own town. The hometown crowd is usually a pretty tough crowd. Even an actor won't go to their hometown in most cases until they're really into it. Critics. Scripture tells them how the prophet Elijah and Elisha were both rejected by the people. They turned to, the, to not God's people or in the eyes of the Israelites. They turned to Naaman, who was a commander in the Assyrian army, had leprosy, heard about the prophet being able to do miraculous things, went to him, and the prophet told him to bathe seven times in the Jordan. And he looked at him and he said, I've got cleaner rivers than this at home. I could bath in seven times, so why should I go in here? And his servant, because of his servant, begged him, do what the prophet says. He went in, bathed seven times, and was healed. Humbled himself before God. Proud man, but he humbled himself because he knew he had no choice. Even that is okay with God, it's a start. Sometimes we get our dander up and we don't wanna cooperate. Luke wanted to make a point for the people. God is not just for the Israelites, he's for everybody. Luke preached mainly to the Greek community. So he emphasized all people are invited, everybody. The biggest sinner to the smallest from wherever you came, doesn't matter. Jesus offered the good news that the Father forgives and loves all all people. All they could understand because of their hard-heartedness was that this boy grew up down the street. He can't be who he says he is and they refuse to believe. God uses the lowly to teach the powerful. As we read these things we've got to realize that we have an advantage because we've been taught since our birth all these stories and we know what's going on. The people of Nazareth were blinded. They weren't there when the angels sang on the hills with the shepherds, glory to God in the highest, to thee a savior is born. They weren't there when John the Baptist took Jesus and dunked him in the Jordan, baptized him and the Spirit came down upon him and said, this is my son, my son, listen to him. We had that advantage over these people. Like Jesus in the gospel, you have been given the wisdom to understand the secrets of scripture. We are blessed with insights into the mysteries of God. And yet, we're very slow to respond very slow, we hesitate and stall. We put off till tomorrow what should be done today. The words of Jeremiah are to each one of us, because through our baptism, which we will hold today, this child will be given priest, prophet, and king. Priest, prophet, and king. Through the prophet stage, you were called to proclaim the good news. Before we were born, we were called by name to serve our God from every nation. In our gospel, we hear Jesus refer to Naaman, the Syrian, and the widow of Sidon as being acceptable to God as they are. We must humble ourselves. All who humble themselves before God are welcomed by Jesus. I'd like to close with a little prayer it's from our, one of our missions. It caught my eye and it catches me every morning before I move. 
I'm an early morning coffee person, so before I have my coffee, I say this prayer. Lord, send the Holy Spirit into my life to fill me with your, his presence. Help me to experience you today and every day. Open wide my heart so that I may better receive your love. Open my ears that I may hear your voice. Open my eyes that I may see you more clearly in all the situations of my life. It amazes me that God wants a relationship with me. He tells us that in scripture. He wants a relationship. Each one of us is waiting for that relationship. All you have to do is accept it. All we have to do is say yes to the Lord and everything is free.